Hey, Zach. What's happening, buddy? Hello. <laughs> it went a lot faster than I was expecting it to that time. It, the lag of this thing is really interesting. So do you remember when Vinyl Mint, way back when, and actually this is probably when I met uh, our guest, is probably because of this. But when Vinyl Mint was trying to do digital music over stream, were you, were you privy to that like 10 years ago? Were you back in that? I remember I started hanging out at Hatch. Vinyl Mint was there. Um, were they doing and, that then though? Trying to do the streaming like. Dude, I, I, that's going back so many years now. I can't remember. I don't even think that could work now, which is crazy because we thought it could work then. I just think there's too much lag. Hmm. What do you, what do you think? Different musicians, different parts of the world trying to play music together. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some video stuff done, but I don't know. I've not, not from a live aspect, but I know that a lot of uh, music is recorded that way now, but I think they just layer it on top of one another in post-production, but I don't know. They're probably recording on their end too. Anyway, how did you meet Dan? Remember? <sighs> You know, I tell everybody this is the the largest small town that you'll ever be part of. And all of us run around in this in the same circles. And then eventually you bump into one another and you're like, hey, heard your name a thousand different times. We've never had a chance to meet one another. Um, and it was one of those types of events where that happened. And uh, the rest is the rest is history, as they say. Hmm. Can I do some, do some fill in on that? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Welcome to the show, Dan. What's well, happening? <laughs> so, uh, and on the vinyl mint comment, you're absolutely right. You, you can you can record it, but you can't do it live. We've seen enough of the all the talking heads on, on networks and and all that through COVID and all that everything virtual now and losing, you know, losing uh, soundtracks, etc. It's just not there. You know, yet. yeah. So, but um, but what? By the way, before we talk about uh, how Tim and I met. What was the young man's name with vinyl? Byron, Byron Morgan. That's it. That's it. Now he was talking about getting out of that business. Yeah, he's. I, I think he works he's, at Facebook now. Last time I had heard, well, he got married last year. Hopefully, he still works at Facebook, right? Yeah, I think he worked at Google before that. Like, I, well, I just say that in the sense of that Facebook just let go of uh, eleven thousand people. So, and Amazon following up with ten thousand. I saw that. Ouch, ouch. Anyway, so back to uh, Tim and I met. Uh, it was only the early part of this year uh, through uh, oh. HRIC, the Hampton Roads Innovation Collaborative. Um, we do our, our monthly Tech Tuesdays and the, the lead off for this year was the state of the technology ecosystem uh, in Hampton Roads. And we had a, a, a panel and, and I had seen Tim's name out there. And of course, with following start, we only said, I'm going to invite Tim. And so basically, uh, I introduced myself. I invited him uh, to participate, and I thought he had some fantastic things to say. And the next thing you know, we're we're collaborating on some pretty cool stuff that we'll talk about. Wow, is that, is that word uh, allowed in this region? Uh, Which one? No, but no, but actually, it is because it's in your. It is in your name uh, in terms of. You go to your URL and uh, HRIC, HRIC standing, you, you have collaboration in there, right? So Yeah, we had the vision uh, back in 2015 to talk about innovating and talk about collaborating because we didn't think anybody had a, had a corner on these things all by themselves. And so uh, it's interesting that it's kind of coming to fruition. Yeah, no, I, I say that in good fun. Yeah. We, uh, there's, there's a lot more collaborating that goes on than people may realize and is HRIC a a rebrand of the old Tech Council? Because like I like because I think about like when I met Kevin Daisy, Paul Dockery, a couple of others way back in the day, and I feel like it was all of the Tech Council 2011, 2012 ish time frame. Then I feel like it went away, and this was just swooped in and, and changed it. But as we're talking about years and everything, is this? A new thing is this a rebrand? Like, wait, no, you, you're uh, you're a hundred percent spot on. So, so it is nothing more than a DBA for the Hampton Roads Technology Council, and the Tech Council was formed as a 501c6 back in the late 90s, 97 ish, and uh, 
focused primarily on on incubators. In fact, the Hampton incubator incubator was the the uh, HRTC uh, work product for many 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 years. And then, of course, incubators went in a different direction. They're they're uh, shared workplace uh, um, locations now with additional. Uh, resources. Hatch was a perfect example, et cetera, et cetera. And so what happened was HRATC put all their eggs in particularly that basket. And then the city Hampton, Hampton went in a different direction and uh, HRTC really just lost their funding and, and kind of went along trying to figure out how they reinvent themselves. They never really did. I was a member uh, of HRTC when I, I was uh, uh, part of Canon information technology services in Chesapeake. And I saw, I saw it go on the rocks and, and just sit there for a while. And, and so when I left corporate America, I said, well, we need to, to start this thing up, but let's, let's rebrand it. And so that's when Hampton Roads Information Collaborative came forward. And so we've been, we've been on that, uh, that role since, um, you know, really 2006, beginning of 2016. On that corporate aspect of it, like what, what is the interest? What is the appetite? Why does a big company give two inklings of, of anything about the small business community, the startup community, the tech world, whatever? Because I mean, I, I think we've all have, have, have done it from different aspects of it and gotten bigger businesses or smaller businesses incorporated into it. But it's always interesting, like, why do they care about it? And then what is the thing that actually gets them to pull the trigger and, and, and hang out, maybe fund it in some kind of some kind of ways like it's always interesting so when you were in corporate world what was the reason why did you care about the hrtc you know uh, the my answer from the canon perspective at the time was that we were a technology company and and so there's there's a uh, specific interest in advancing technology because advancing technology creates sometimes you get a, a push pull where where your technology gets brought along so if it falls into the, the mission of a company or the product um, direction of a company, they can oftentimes jump in to, um, you know, to provide that funding. Now, having said that, uh, it, it's also been a far more challenging uh, time from a budgetary perspective for a lot of these organizations. So uh, number one, number two, um, and, and Tim touched upon this earlier, this is a small community by comparison. And so, there's only but so many uh, funding pockets or, or pools, and the more organizations that we have, oftentimes there's there's conflict in terms of them trying to get from the same from the same cash uh, providers. So, um, you know, with uh, with us, we have we have a couple large corporations. We don't have uh, as many as we used to, but then we have uh, membership with with smaller donations, etc. And uh, and so you, you kind of make up for it in, in just a different percentage here and a different percentage there. And then the more you do, you lo and behold, you start attracting, you know, some of those larger organizations back. Yeah. And the interesting thing is to add on to that, Dan, is that for the larger organizations that are not part of it, one of the good reasons that they should consider is the fact of large organizations, they can't disrupt things. They can't move as quickly. They're just not as agile as the younger, smaller startup company. So if you want to get an idea in terms of, hey, what's coming down the pipe? What are the problems that people are solving right now? What better way to, uh, to identify those areas than by hanging around with the, uh, the founders and of the startups that we have in the community today? Not to mention, what, 80, 90% of startups fail. And uh, when it comes to like an aqua hire or uh, access to talent kind of thing, it's a, it's a, a great way to, to identify talent. But well, that was Zach, you know, Enterprises. That. yeah, I mean, Jimmy and Enterprises straight up told me like, look, we know all your companies are going to fail. They're going to bring in a ton of a, a ton of talent into here. We're giving you all this money because we want your talent afterwards. And I was <laughs> like, uh, okay, <laughs> whatever. that's completely fair. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, they were very honest with me in that answer. And that was what they told me. I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, why, like, why are you here? You, you we're too small for what you guys are going after. And they were like, you're not though, because it cost us, I think, I think they said something like $18,000 per person to, uh, uh, that's what their HRs would, would pay to, uh, uh, acquire a new hire. Yeah. 
And, and that's not like, even talking the training to get someone trained and everything yeah, else. Yeah, just their just their acquisition team. It, it cost them eighteen thousand dollars or something per person. And they were like, "If you can, if we can pay you X, and you can get us a multiplier that's significantly less than that, this is this is just that. It's an acquisition um, fee for us." And I'm like, "Okay, like, you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> welcome the check every day." Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very wise. And then on the flip side of that, how many of the large organizations in the region? Our corporate headquarters versus large regional regional presence of an organization that is really kind of controlled by HQ somewhere else. I'll give you the example that uh, uh, that I mentioned earlier with Canon Information Technology Services, where we were we were part of the Greater Canon. So we had uh, CITS, the acronym I used in Chesapeake. We we were here. Then we had Canon Virginia up in Newport News, which was large manufacturing uh, and refurbishment and both of us sister companies reported up to canon usa in uh in lake success new york and then canon usa reported to canon tokyo the, the global canon so much of much of what canon virginia was allowed to do and some of what we were allowed to do had to make sure that you know we had to make sure it aligned to to canon usa which was aligned to uh to canon tokyo we had a little bit more play here regionally as, as Canon ITS because they just knew very little about what we were doing and they, they trusted us and they, um, they, uh, they really relied up upon us to do what was right for the community and, and all that. But that doesn't take place all the time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's an interesting background. I didn't realize that you uh, had time with Canon, Dan. 11 years. And, uh, and we were, in fact, part of one of the, 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 uh, uh, anecdotal stories I want to tell is when I came from, uh, I was, a, I'm a Chicagoan born and raised. And, and, uh, when I came to Canon, um, they hired me because the, my predecessor was turning, he was 63 and at 65 out the door, <laughs> out, you out. <laughs> so, wow. And he said, so there was that he had two years. And so we needed to create a succession plan. And the other side of it was that that Canon was in, was the last in the industry with respect to uh, customer support, service operations, et cetera, et cetera. So they hired me uh, for two reasons. Number one, turn it around. And number two, if I was successful in turning it around, I would become the president of, of uh, Canon Information Technology Services in Chesapeake. We had like six, 700 people. Well, we, we turned it around in the first year. We went from last place to first place, and we were able to main first place as identified by Reader's Choice Magazine for 10 straight years. And, wow. uh, and so I earned my stripes, and, and uh, um, my predecessor uh, retired at, at 65, and, uh, and that was it. And where, where, does, where does Apple come into play? Because you also have experience with Apple as well. Yeah, I... Uh, I, uh, I worked for Apple um, from 1982 to 1990, and so I I was one of the I was I was employee ID number 2734 2734. I was I was hired in the Chicago operations back when the Apple II was uh, and T and three were the leading uh, computers, and so we ran service and support and in mid Midwest operations for Apple, and I was there for for nine years. spent spent half my time. In, uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, Campbell, California, San Jose, all that kind of stuff. Cupertino uh, had the pleasure uh, and, and sometimes uh, the experience, shall we say, of interfacing with uh, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and, and that old team. So it was, uh, that's how, that was a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity. Um, so that, it was, it was <laughs> fun. I can only, yeah, I, I've heard, we've heard some stories uh, in some past shows with someone with uh, some, some experience with Mr. Jobs, but uh, I mean, what a, what a company to cut your teeth on to, uh, wow. Yeah, I was just a young kid, a mid twenties type of thing. And uh, uh, let's see, let me see. Well, a little bit more than mid twenties, but I, I pad it for, for my own purposes. <laughs> so, so it's in my thirties, but uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good experience. I'm glad I was able to do it. And we just, we just had a, an Apple reunion. We, we still get together with, uh, with people from, from time to time. 
uh, that uh, that worked at Apple back in the day. It was a lot of fun. It's nothing. It's nothing like it used to be. I mean, we went through the upside and we went through the downside, um, and so that's that's when I left. And that's what companies are doing, and they're doing it today. It's just you know normal operations, but it, uh, I'm glad I was there at the right time and, and right place. So, uh, uh, but I did want to finish my story about uh, when I came to work for Canon. I'll, I'll never forget. I had met my predecessor at a trade show, and. Uh, and he kind of laid this out to me. He says, what do you think about, you know, backing me up and helping me turn this thing around and, and all that. And I said, well, yeah, you know, that's interesting. And Cannon's a great name. And then uh, I said, where are you guys at? You're on the East coast. And he says, yeah, we're in Hampton roads. And uh, I, I said, I'm a Chicagoan, right? Born and raised. I'm like, what's a Hampton roads. And, uh, and he, he was trying to tell me it's at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, Southeast Virginia. I'm like, yeah, roughly familiar with that. And, and, uh, and he, he said, well, we're right in between like Norfolk and, and, uh, and Virginia beach. And I said, well, now I know I'm the Naval base. I know where you're at. So once again, there was a, <laughs> I, 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 I raised this because that was you're just, just trying to you're trying to get uh raise zach's blood pressure aren't you that, well that's and what i'm trying to say is that that mentality uh was was a, around in 2002 and then there's a there's another board colleague of ours who was also a member of that panel um i'll just say marty i don't know if we're allowed to, to say other names but uh, uh marty marty you guys know where i'm talking and so you know he consults internationally and Part of, of what we're going to talk about here is, is based on even today. And so this was probably, well, he probably does, hasn't done many travel, tra travels over there lately, but he would travel and he'd say, yeah, Hampton Roads. And, and so, and what did he hear? In a, in a different accent, but he might've heard the same thing. What's a Hampton Roads? Right. And, and, and so, and Marty mentioned all that. Uh, in uh, in our conversation, that panel conversation, and that is that was part of the motivation for you know taking nothing away from what's been done, but but there's still more to do. There's still more work to to be done, and and that's what brought us to our our uh, collaboration. I think it's all about l the lack of free marketing that we're taking advantage of. And exactly what you just said. I've been in stories too. I remember I was in um, Knoxville, Tennessee, with with Brian Stevens from the Hampton Roads Chamber of Commerce, sure. and he said, "I'm from Hampton Roads." To someone, the guy, you know, someone at the university there, he was like, "I have no idea where it is." And I said, "Oh, I'm I'm Zach. I'm from Norfolk, basically the exact same place." And that guy, the guy goes, "Oh, my brother lived there." Yeah. There you go. And so it's just like we're, we the lack of free marketing that we want to fight on is just like, guys, like th we're, this is obnoxious. Like, let's yeah. let's just take advantage of it. Yeah. You know, Pharrell, Pharrell is doing a lot of marketing for us. Right. Something in the water is in Virginia Beach. Yeah. You know, globally, that's being marketed. Take advantage of that. You got the world's largest naval base in Norfolk. Um, interesting thought. I texted Tim this on Friday night. I think it was Tim. Every year for like the last 10 years, I've seen the um, one of the first college basketball games of the year in San Diego on an aircraft carrier. And they play like a big top 25 game um, on the aircraft carrier. This year was Michigan State and Gonzaga. And what's interesting is to me is why don't we have something like that here? Have you ever heard of anyone talk about something like that? Or it, it, it just seems like so many awesome opportunities could be opened there and we don't do it. Why isn't the world's largest uh, naval parade here? Like all these little things that we could be playing with. It just seems yeah. like we don't do what. Have you heard anything I mean, just, about, like just the appetite for that? Like, yeah. What, anyway. I mean, I, I think it's baby steps, but I agree with you in the sense of like, it seems like there's a, a, a bowl game for like everything. I mean, there could be a colonial bowl. There could be, uh, I mean, you, you, they, they do a William and Mary. I mean, they could do all kinds of different things, but I, I think it's baby steps. And one of the things that we'll get to in the show is just, is bringing everyone to the table um, so that we can at least talk on the, on the same page and, and, and bring everyone together to, Take some baby steps. And Zach, they uh, they considered uh, the basketball game, but ever since that unfortunate incident a number of years ago when they had the, the football game on the carrier deck in 
too many people ran off the, the bow of the ship going for the deep pass. Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> that made them reconsider. I'm just pulling your blank. I'm sorry. That didn't really happen. But You never know. <laughs> no, <I> know. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, they, they build like a little arena around it. Like it's, it yeah. seems well done. I understand it's, it's colder here. So maybe that's not a, a reason why, but I'm sure they could figure out something. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, and these carriers, uh, you know, not to digress too much, but the it doesn't have to be a topside. I mean, the the underdeck where the the, the hangar area, etc. These these things are huge, and so um, could they not put an event on a ship? Obviously, there's security clearance issues and all that kind of stuff that has to be taken into account. But but uh, the what idea is showcasing, 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 showcasing it. Uh, it needs to be marketing opportunities. You would think that there would be, and, and I, I could be speaking out of ignorance. So, but I would think that there would be something on the Wisconsin more more times than not. Um, I think the Wisconsin, the problem with Wisconsin is not not no a sporting blast. thing, but just oh, like yeah. if they're for conferences or something like that. I mean, if somebody wanted to sponsor a reception where you yeah have some cocktails on uh, the Wisconsin, that'd be pretty cool. That is a cool idea. We'll have to consider that. For... It's definitely a cool venue. Yeah. Absolutely. So speaking of uh, baby steps, Dan, what uh, we have a couple we have we have some exciting stuff that's that's come about in terms of uh, quarterly meetups that we're trying to 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 reestablish. Um, where do you want to start on that? Well, I'd rather let's see. Um... Well, I think to your point, let's let's uh, let's start with that. So, the quarterly event um, that you mentioned is is HR uh, Biz Wheel Quarterly, and that too came from a collaborative conversation um, that uh, that we had related to boy all these pop up networking events that are that are going around. And I I will say that even our old critical mass, um, the Technology Council HIC. Uh, was holding these critical mass events and in fact still is on a monthly basis and we're just you know we're it's too much and and they're in conflict with other events etc conversely we are also did these annual traditional you know large events and so what we talked about which i think was was a great uh, direction was well let's let's not do one or the other. Let's let's do these quarterly events or smaller size, easier scope. And then we kept talking about we can honor regional companies and we can put them in various locations, certainly move them back and forth between the peninsula and the south side. And so that's what we did. And uh, we started off HR Biz Wheel Quarterly. And we'll, we'll talk about the why the name and, and the linkage to the overall program in a bit. But we started HR Biz Wheel Quarterly in September. And that was the that was the uh, the launch, and we had it up on Fort Monroe grounds at 757 Makerspace, uh, with Bo Turner, owner and proprietor there. And so we had um, we had some good sponsorships. We had some some economic development people, the chamber, the Peninsula Chamber rather, um, involved, and we probably had. Uh, Tim, what do you think? 65 people there? Yeah, there were 65, 70 folks. Um, yeah, well over 100 people RSVP. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the, the, the cool thing in terms of what we did there and what we're doing there is uh, is creating density. And that's something that is always a topic of conversation is rather than having so many small groups with fewer number of people in attendance, Let's get everybody together and see and maximize the attendance so that we can have density in terms of you can meet more people because that's really where the where the magic happens. So uh, really with that with that density focus in mind. Yeah. And so it went it went very well. It was our shakedown cruise. We learned some things from it. Um, we had to tighten up a little bit uh, here and there in terms of of programming throughout the night. So it just doesn't kind of run free form. But. But uh, but generally speaking, um, it was it was pretty successful. So uh, the next we, one's exciting too. Yes, it is, and and that is to be held December first at the Hive, which is Virginia Beach, the Virginia Beach uh, Economic Development uh, Resource Center at the corner of Independence and whatever it is over there, but right around the corner from the from the Westin. So it runs from five to seven. 
That's another thing. We said, look, five to seven is good. It doesn't have to be a four hour event or a six hour event. It doesn't have to have all these talking heads, etc. So it's five to seven, December 1st, and we're honoring Drone Up. The key here is that we want to make sure that we honor regional companies who are contributing to the to the region uh, from an economic perspective, et cetera. And uh, Drone Up has certainly been in the news a great deal and um, of late and uh, is doing a fantastic job. They have several million dollars of investment coming in, hiring hundreds of people. Uh, we were originally going to have it. Right. I was going to ask you to touch on that. that yeah. That's an interesting thing that, yeah. Um, yeah, so tell that story. Yeah. And and, uh, and so uh, talking to Tom Walker, um, uh, at first we said, yeah, we're going to, let's just do it right at Drone Up. Well, the, the issue is that, uh, and because I had gone to their open house and I thought this would, you know, this would be uh, pretty supportive. Well, the, the issue is because of their investment and their hiring, they're, they're bringing in so many people, they're bringing in, and I'm sorry, they're building cubes in their open spaces. So, so they came back and said, we can only house about 50 people. And I said, we got to, you know, that dog don't hunt, we got to move. So, uh, so we went off and, uh, and found the hive and, uh, and, uh, and 100 people is like perfect for that. And it's very cool. Very cool. And Tim, you saw it there. You saw the yeah, yeah. the fold in stadium seating and all that in the conference room and the various locations. So well, and the thing that's really, really cool is as I've been out and about, uh, whether something in the water or I'm sorry, uh, Mighty Dream Forum. Yeah, I've been talking to more and more people. And so like drone up is a perfect, perfect case in point in, in the sense that People are like, man, I, you know, I want to. I, I hear so much about Drone Up. I want to learn more about Drone Up. I, 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 you know, I would love to meet Tom Walker, uh, talk to some people. Well, this is your opportunity. So by doing a networking event like this, this now you can go and you can meet the people. You can you can learn more about them, and and we can showcase some of the some of the. I mean, they these. It won't be long. I I, I mean, they're going to be a unicorn. I mean, they're just. I mean, they are just growing so fast i think that they're uh, building out their fifth fifth delivery location right now was uh arizona was that what it was zach phoenix maybe i don't know but well they were in dallas but dallas but i think next up is phoenix is, is what i saw but i mean they're just i mean this is just this is a company that we need to back and showcase and everyone needs to be aware this is what i want to talk about because i feel like we've been talking this for a long time this area you know, you want a company that makes it big, you want to do it, you want to support it, you, you, whatever, from that perspective, like, is it easy to figure out what, and it doesn't have, this doesn't have to be a conversation about drone out, but is it easy to figure out what company to support? And then it, when we were talking about this, it just reminded me of like, I remember in like 2013 timeframe, two large businesses, I feel like got acquired here. And the story was super negative about it. Like, oh, they got acquired. And I'm thinking to myself, had I started that business 18 years ago and sold it for $4 billion, that's a hell of a positive story to spin. But we were allowing the story from the local news organizations to be this is a bad thing for the area. And it's like, well, are we supporting this growth thing that we're trying or are we not? And so it, like, I, I don't even know that people know to support this company or any other company. And then how they can support it. And then from the positive perspective, like it's just because I think it was like a mayor group and I think Smithfield had gotten acquired at that time. And those were the two companies, if, if I recall, like 2013 time frame, like drone up, I feel like is loosely talked about, but not a lot at all. And for some of the stuff that they're that they're doing and, and working with and partnerships with. It seems like that would be the company that maybe people should start talking about more. Am I am I losing my mind on that? Like like what? Well, like, no, I think that uh, so this is going to dovetail like really well into the into the next conversation in terms of where we're going with with our business directory so that we can market our, the region as as it should be. But yeah, I agree in the sense of uh, you know we need to control the narrative. And I mean, if you look at just, I mean, I think that they're making a documentary or a movie right now on uh, PayPal Mafia. In okay. terms of just if you look at the talent that came out of PayPal, I mean, it's just insane the number of companies that have spawned as a result of that mm -hmm. you know so when there's a four billion dollar acquisition like that i mean that talent's gonna they're gonna go on and they're gonna create new ventures and that's, i mean th that that's what that's what it's all about uh, true and and uh you know I, I must talk about our q1 focus and there's a couple like prerequisite 
organizations that we have to consider before we start going into the, the types of companies um, that this conversation is, is touching upon. For instance, the, the, uh, again, we're in Q1, we're going to go back to the peninsula. We felt that it was important for us to recognize Huntington Ingalls Newport News Shipbuilding. They're not a small startup or an entrepreneurial business, but they're a major employer in Hampton Roads. And so we thought this is probably a pretty good stop to make in the early goings before we get back to some of the smaller um, companies that uh, that we're referring to. So it's it's a check mark um, along the way just because they've done so great to the region, and we we should show them the type yeah. of respect that. They're and on the other you, thing, it sounds like you're trying to make an excuse for that. Like I don't think you have to do that. Like we should be supporting that. We should be supporting a business that has tens of thousands of employees, not looking at that as like oh, it's just like. Do it. Well, and the thing is, they're so uh, big. I mean, they are just a boat. But that's a good thing. Them. It is I, good. I, right. And but, but my point is, is that like, so when you bring the smaller companies and the startup companies, they would love to have a relationship with the Huntington Ingalls, but they don't know where to go to even make that connection. And, and, and I know that Huntington Ingalls is in the exact same position in the sense of, we would like to integrate with some of the smaller businesses, but we don't know how to do that either. So by having an event there, we're making that connection and allowing that to happen. So true. And in fact, Tim, you don't know about this. And again, I won't, I won't mention Breaking names, news. Oh. but at our critical mass that we had last week, there was one of our board members who, who's a owner proprietor of, of a small tech company um, and a growing tech company. Two things about, about his company. Number one, he's been unable to get adequate business out of Hampton Roads. He is big internationally. He's big. big he's, he's growing nationally and internationally, but he can't get uh, can't get enough business to sustain his business in Hampton Roads. And and the quote that that uh, he tells me from time to time, he said he's always going up against the the buyers, etc. And he says nobody gets fired for hiring IBM or replace IBM with Microsoft. If you hire IBM or Microsoft and they don't quite get it done. There's usually blah, 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 but nobody loses your job because it was a good bet, IBM or Microsoft. So how does he penetrate um, some of these larger organizations? Well, lo and behold, at, at the event came in, and again, I won't say their name, but they were responsible for small business uh, advocacy for Huntington Ingalls Newport New Shipbuilding. And uh, uh, they were those two people were sitting right uh, next to each other at, at critical mass and um, made the introductions and say, they started chatting They were talking all night. Well, all night was two hours, but um, I'd love to see that something came from that, but those are the types of introductions because it is tough to, to penetrate large, large organizations. We had another uh, board member with a company that was able to penetrate the port uh, fairly well a couple of years ago, and and it was by by virtue of the introductions and the and the setting that we put in place to allow those meetups to occur, and uh, and so if we can just keep building upon those kind of successes, you know you, you can't forget Zach to your point the Huntington Ingalls or the Newport Sh New Shipbuilding they're on their own course no pun intended but the fact is where we can help fill in uh, for some of these smaller companies what a great what a great story yeah. And how long ago was it, Zach, when we had uh, NASA Tech Transfer on the show? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's the same deal in the sense of, yeah, they're sitting on hundreds of patents that they want to commercialize. Yeah, and from a founder standpoint, they're trying to solve a problem. Whereas instead of doing all the R&D that's needed, there could be something on the shelf that NASA has to, to leverage and license. But again, you know, no one knows how to make that connection. So is it uh, just a connection missing? So Dan, from your 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 time in corporate America, you you said oftentimes because your HQ is just this local thing and not somewhere else. I mean, is, is it hard to 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 dive into that? It, is it because they're just trying to save their tails and that's why they don't do it, or is there something where they can actually get to the crux of it and say, hey, we can work with this company here. We are able to to. I don't know, uh, maneuver around, you know, the big HQ, like, like, how does that happen? Because we do have a lot of those companies here uh, that are far, fairly large that have a local HQ, but not like the main HQ. And what, what are ways that they can actually get access and, and, and make that happen? Real quick story. Several years ago, uh, when I was at Canon and we had a vendor come in 
and provide a technology solution. Most of the technology that, that we had in place in, uh, in Chesapeake was within our decision um, opportunity, but, the, but there's, there was a couple exceptions where the overlap went all the way to corporate headquarters. This person came in and, and I'm telling you, and I'm, I'm the old dog from the sea in the technology world, gave the best presentation I had ever seen, rock solid, lock it down, that type of thing. And, uh, and our IT director uh, was very appreciative of it and all that, but set the expectations accordingly that this was an uphill push because in this particular case, it was a shared technology with our corporate headquarters. They've got their relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And so in that particular case, even though she had a great product, great presentation, dialed in, rock solid, she didn't get the order. And so, you know, to answer your question, Zach, there's, there's, a, there's a mix of, of, of answers there. It's all, it's all uh, dependent on, you know, the mission of the company and, and the flexibility that they give to, um, to local presence and relationships. I mean, everything, everything, everything uh, takes place. And, uh, and so it's really a matter of, you really have to create that, that relationship and that dialogue and, and build that trust. And, and that's where these meetups um, that we're trying to do can occur. And there's nothing new about meetups. People do them all the time, but, but that's what we're trying to do to Tim's earlier point. We're trying to introduce the players. And so is there a chance that a larger organization can, or a medium sized organization even can, can use what a smaller organization brings to the table. And that, that is a, a definite maybe. How many, uh, how many organizations are now railing behind the quarterly meetups. I mean, that, that, it seems like uh, we're going to have to move from uh, standard eight and a half by eleven paper to legal size paper because the number of organizations <laughs> are all behind it at this point. And we just got another one today, so we're we're uh, we're knocking on the door of, of thirty, and I can only shrink the logo so so far to make them all fit on one page, which is what's going on. Um, so this was this was yet uh, another cy a cyber firm that's working out of Norfolk, which I had never heard before, and so they want to. They want to be involved in this activity, at least for the December event. And and uh, and Zach, just uh, to let you know, I'll let our let your viewers all know that. So what we offer is a sponsorship program. So the December event, you know, it costs. We're not asking for five thousand dollars of sponsorships or fifteen hundred and this and that. It's like it's a hundred bucks. And so we we're, we're trying to do this organically and making it easy and and. Uh, oftentimes discretionary spending for even a small company or one that doesn't have the, the HQ one that has a local presence. And so we say it's a hundred bucks for December and we have four events scheduled, two on the peninsula and two on the South side for 2023. We discount it 50 bucks. So it's like for 450, you get December to December. Um, they're signing up for December, this, this particular December, this, this see how it goes. We've got a couple, couple organizations that are kind of doing a test drive, but, uh, but there you go. So we're, we're knocking on the yeah. 30 and you know, keep, keep building. We uh, get local, local beverages from local companies and local uh, food from, uh, from restaurants. So it's, yeah. it's a cool deal. It's important. Yeah. It. Tim, you made that recommendation that, uh, and, and I wanted to, to fill you in on something else too, because uh, you said, wouldn't it be great if we can do, you know, local craft beers and things like that? Yeah, that's a great idea. So we are going to have local craft beer. It's going to be O'Connor's. Um, I, 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 uh, stopped short on, on, on saying it'll be a particular kind of O'Connor's versus one that's on the shelf, you know, so, uh, but it will be O'Connor's and, uh, and, and we're going to have mermaid wines and, uh, you guys are familiar with mermaid winery, yep. uh, both in Norfolk and Virginia beach. And then we're going to have, uh, Benny's pizza, which is right, uh, uh, right downtown, uh, well, town center of Virginia Beach, and that was a recommendation. So, um, but what I was going to say, Tim, is I was talking to Huntington Ingalls, the partnership in person, just last week, and again, we're looking at the coordinates for the Q1 event. And uh, and back to an earlier conversation, I said, "Put it on a ship." I said, "Put it on a ship. We can do it. You can do it. You know, you can do it." So, uh, so we're working on that. But she came back and said, um, "Can we use all local?" providers of food and beverage. I said, yes, we can. And yeah. uh, over that story. So she was all over that. Yeah. Well, and the crazy thing is too, is we're talking about these big juggernauts in our region. You know, one of the things that I had pointed out, I was like, we can still get Bud, Bud Light. Sure. And because 
I mean, that's the stuff the road in Williamsburg, you know, so uh, yeah, exactly. not to mention that devil's backbone and everything else, it's uh, all part of Anheuser-Busch. Yep. Yep. So we'll, we'll try to do an assortment, you know, that type of thing. So uh, yeah. But uh, how many Benny's pizzas do you think you guys will have to order? 10. If based on a hundred. We're going to ask them to slice the pie, uh, this, make the uh, slices a little bit smaller. Yeah. Not the big, the big pie shape. They said they'll do like a party party approach, you know, little squares. So, I mean, as is, I think 10 pizzas is going to require a, a dump truck or at least a panel truck to. Yes, uh, I'm, told, I'm told they're 10, 10 seems like a lot to me and we used to have like 50 <laughs> people at hatch and one was sufficient so like zach did I, you ever try their food challenge did you you tried no, that didn't you no I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, no it's too much <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that they that they threw out of course that's benny's and they want to sell pizzas <laughs> so you gotta take that into consideration uh but uh it'll be somewhere you know down that path i don't know i don't know you can eat a benny's pizza and i think an hour and if you do that by yourself, you win 500 bucks. This sounds like, like the old 90s, 96er challenge. From right. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I never attempted it. Um, they were used to be right next to my office. Uh, that would probably be pretty hard. It's probably like six pounds and it's mostly bread, you know, dough. And so I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know if I could have done it. Tim, could you have done it? No, man. I, yeah. I, I, I do. I, I struggle with just two pieces. I mean, it's just, uh, that's, that's a lot of. I've seen huge. you eat an entire black Pelican pizza. Oh, challenge. That's not very, <laughs> it's, it's not very <laughs> they're, they're like, they're like date pizza, you know, it's small. It's small. Do you, do you think it's easy to recognize a company that's going to make it? I think it's easy to understand or to recognize a company that that has the the potential of making it. I think uh, I think if you look at the the product, um, the the uh, the business plan, the individuals, I think that that it's easy to identify if somebody is is got a shot at it. Um, that doesn't necessarily pan out all the time, as we know, as we all know. Do you think this area has just as much opportunity? Like, it, is there something missing in this area to see the success? Or are we on the same playing field or anything like that? Oh, I don't think we're on the same playing field. I think that we, uh, I think we have some work to do to, uh, to do some equalizing uh, in various ecosystem territories around the United States. And that's part of what, um, what we're doing, because we have to let people know what a great area this is for startup business entrepreneurism and success it doesn't have the corporate headquarters as we talked about before uh and so there there is a challenge there um but the some of those corporate headquarters are not too far away right up the road so uh um but having said that unless we unless we market the region unless we talk about the advantages of of uh the culture and climate and technology access and and the 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 academia community and the science community and and, and how would you propose that we would do something like that, Dan? Well, you know, I think we're I think <laughs> we're uh, we we stumbled on a great idea, Tim, and uh, <laughs> and that is called HR Biz Wheel. And so I will I will, but I want to give credit where credit is due. I said I I'm, I'm going to tell you that I think Start Wheel was um was just a, a great thing to bring to the region and you know start wheel back in the day really started off it it, it uh it was really all about a regional calendar and and so uh and correct me where i'm wrong but i just remember you know the the founder one of the co-founders of start wheel uh, mr david arias of swimways um and I just remember early conversations because we got to have a single calendar, got to have a single calendar. And and uh, and so that ultimately is is what took place. And there's still a, a lot of organizations that are, are trying to uh, to let go of their own calendaring system or at least paralleling the data in, in Startwheel. But having said that, Startwheel has evolved. And I think to your great credit, uh, Tim, that. Uh, that it is, it is a, a vehicle that helps to promote the region, speak to all the activity, as much of the activity as you can, 
Um, and so that is what feeds into the ecosystem. I remember the old ecosystem days back from, from uh, Apple Computer and Cupertino, and it was just the excitement of, of seeing what everybody else was doing and, and the get-togethers and, and the, the friendly competition and sometimes the, the aggressive competition um, to, to outshine and outperform the other organizations. That's, that's what built it. Um, now, there was a whole lot of things that happened in Cupertino and and Silicon Valley is, is not to be replicated uh, more than likely here. But I mean, there are things that that we can do. And so so uh, what we what we decided to, to do was take take start wheel as as existed, which was probably gave us 70, 75 percent of uh, conservatively of, of what we needed and layer on top of it still within the start wheel technology, but lay on uh, uh, layer on a uh, some additional website uh functionality called hr biz wheel and so the marketing component of this is is hr biz wheel hence the name hr biz wheel quarterly with our quarterly events is just a a, a subset of um of hr biz wheel. and this is where we talk about the expansion of tim has mentioned the directory we want to go beyond uh, just startups startup we love them we want them all in there as, as best we can but we want to talk about the rest of business uh as well and so we had conversations about, you know, what, and we're still having conversations about: do we, do we, do we have a florist in there? Do you know? Do we have a cybersecurity firm in there that's that's mid-range? Well, the answer is yeah, maybe yeah. And so then we talk about: well, what should do we list um, somebody that's that's making fifty thousand dollars a year in a lifestyle business, uh, or do we say the entry point for to to make it to the directory might be five hundred thousand dollars? Uh, we're still having those conversations. And, and so a lot of work is being done right now to bring in several thousand more businesses that, uh, uh, that are found within Hampton Roads. And, uh, and that, that data is, is, is becoming available very soon. We're going to have uh, uh, some videos released in terms of what, here's the system. We consider this a regional asset. <laughs> and so when we, when we speak to our sponsors, et cetera, and uh, whether it's our economic development offices, whether it's our chambers, north, geez, there's north, south there's chambers, there's the Hispanic chamber, there's Filipino chamber, you know, there's there's uh, black brand, the, the black chamber. You know, this, we want to be a regional asset. We want to be that link that people can connect to, to say, if you're looking to do something related to business or or research what's what companies are in Hampton Roads. Research Hampton Roads. Is this a, is this a good place for us to bring our business, or can, can, to continue growing our business? That we can do this. And so this stuff. This is this ain't just talk. Um, right. Um, the, there's there's uh, there's there's lots of talk. Well, it's there. really. Uh, I mean, from my my point of view, it, it, it's I'm really proud of the fact that uh, we're starting with DE and I businesses. So uh, it's just, especially after coming off the heels of Mighty Dream, there is a huge sense of momentum and the talking about the need to level the playing field, uh, increase the amount of exposure and opportunity. Uh, Antonio was just talking about that uh, on last week's podcast, Zach. And um, you know, so that's what we're leading out with. And uh, you know, it's just, we're, we're truly building a community. And it's just, it's stunning that we don't, there is nothing out there that exists, but uh, we'll be able to one, identify everything that's, identify the playing field and then market the region in a way that needs to be marketed uh, and not have to worry about the narrative being controlled by organizations where, you know, Zach, you could uh, bring into play where if it bleeds, it leads, you know, I mean, we'll be able to just focus on what's happening within the business community and focus on that and the successes and all the great things that are happening. And Zach, you mentioned earlier about the missed opportunities we have in marketing. Well, one of the, the dimensions of this is that we want to be in the in the marketing business, if you will, and showcase uh, many of the companies in Hampton Roads. And so we will have a, we will have an opportunity for them to create their commercials, if you will, and we're not sure exactly how that's going to look yet. Whether it's a, uh, it'll be a video of some sort. We might just be, you know, put a video up on YouTube. We might have some some guardrails to to put up uh, for consistency purposes, without without domineering uh, the approach. But we want to be able to say, look at who's 
look at who's involved in these kind of businesses in Hampton Roads. So if you consider that there's ultimately going to be thousands of companies in the directory, and at any point in time, one can say, and they're categorized. And so if somebody wants to look at what's happening in cybersecurity or this, that, and the other, click through, watch a commercial uh, video, if you will, for lack of a better term about that organization. Here's the contact information. And and we want to push this out to the to the country and to the world. We want people to know who Hampton Roads is and the companies inside. Yes. Yeah, so I've always wondered from an organization standpoint, not necessarily this organization, but organizations are, you know, economic development engines, right? I think that's what a lot of the, the, the organizations that we've talked about today are. Um, to me, it's always, well, what does the company that you guys support want, right? What do the founders of those companies, what, what do they want? And I feel like that, that question is never even asked where it's just like, we're just going to give you what we think. And they do this event and all it is is a bunch of suits, and you never you, you might have a couple business, you know, a couple of your local businesses that attend, and it it doesn't really jive for them because th it, it ultimately just ends up being a, a waste of time because it doesn't move anything forward because it, it it doesn't help them, and so maybe it's the video that you just talked about being a marketing arm of that, but like what what's your pitch to a business that's like hey we know you've you've been to a lot of these economic development events in the past but instead of just getting up and saying hi or instead of just coming to an event like what what is the what is the pitch for them so that it's it's actually for them they feel included so that because i feel like when we did hatch that was yeah. a lot of the stuff it was like remove all that other stuff so that it was just for you guys and people really felt at home with that um and some people have said they don't feel like that is still here anymore because it because we got rid of our, of our space, whatever that that's fine. I, I guess I appreciate people saying that, but what, what is like, what is the pitch to the business owner? What is the pitch to that small business to, to get involved, to show up, to, to be a part of something like this? Fair question. And, and so um, I'd like to start by, by uh, commenting that this is not a city economic development effort. Um, Whereas we might have had some sponsorship up on the peninsula for the first event from two cities, economic development offices uh, on the south side, really, the you know, we have an in-kind vis-a-vis um, -vis the hive uh, investment, um, but, uh, but it is not a, an economic development office show, number one. So we do need to make that, that clarification and separation. Let me also reflect back not to, to draw the time clock back too far, but uh, there was a number of years ago, four years ago, um, almost five now, uh, it'll be five in 2023. We talked about doing some of this stuff with almost 50 small companies in the business and uh, in, in area business. And it, it was hit or miss, guys. It was like, oh, I mean, there was a series of questions. We count, called the, the, the effort Foundation for Innovation. And what what are you looking for? How's the state doing? Hit or miss. How is the city doing? Hit or miss. What are you looking for? The uh, Let me tell you the single definitive answer after all of that. And everybody's respecting, you know, what are the chambers doing for you? Same drill, hit or miss. It's there's some, the universities, same drill, hit or miss. There's good stuff and some, some, you know, some usable stuff, less usable stuff, but all kind of prerequisite activity that the region should have. And, and we do. But in every single case, what, what, was, what were the companies looking for? It was introductions and straight shots at developing business and, uh, and sales, et cetera, et cetera. And so much of, of what we're doing right now is to create that exposure. And for instance, we had, uh, you know, we had meetings pre-COVID that was going on where we had companies coming in and we had CIOs. We had, uh, we'd, we'd have 40 people in a room, many of the CIOs from the larger, the larger organizations in the region. And that's where some people were getting not just exposure, but getting direct business. And we want to continue doing that. So these types of things are, are, are going to be promoted and marketed to that audience in the region. We want to make sure that people are meeting, meeting one another. Ongoing, we have, uh, not to be cliche, um, but uh, a voice of business um, 
opportunity with with HR Biz Wheel and Start Wheel, where we're going to keep ag- asking for feedback and what could make it better, whether it's something as simple as the event or something programmatically speaking for the for the greater effort. Um, you can't do it without asking their opinions and 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 taking action on those opinions. Yeah, I, I and to add to that, Dan, I. Uh couple two things one I mean hundred percent on the fact of you know we are not location specific but but two uh, you know we we have the the businesses we're fighting for the businesses we're, we're it's, it's not a locality that is fighting to expand a footprint or or yeah, you know, we we are fighting for the businesses, uh, whether if it's to make the introductions to to make them successful, whatever the case is. So there's there's that aspect, but then the other thing in terms of like where how Start Wheel began uh, and what my focus is is that we are we started with solving the problems that the founders face, and, and you know so we didn't come out with a a solution looking for the problem. We started with the problem, and then we just continually add more features based on the feedback that we're receiving from founders and businesses. And we're, we're satisfying those pain points. So uh, I think that that's another big difference that uh, with what's going on, Zach. Another thing we want to do is, is again, I talk about we, we want to be an asset for the region. And uh, when we start getting this data in, there will be pre-populated data. There will be opportunities for companies to go in and adjust the, um, the data for their organization, et cetera. But we want to be able to provide reporting, reporting that may not or doesn't exist on a regional basis, surprisingly. If you talk about the cities, the cities say, well, we have our data. You know, can we see it? No, Uh, no, we can't. Uh, We can't share that information. Um, I learned that when I did my first startup address, we asked all the 17 cities for data like that. And I was like, "It, it, it was, in my opinion, really simple stuff. Yeah. It was like, can you tell me how many businesses started? How many of them closed? Why did they close? Were they a real business? Were they like a moonlight contract? Like there's all these like little things that I feel like you can get a better grasp of where your actual business community is. And I think if I remember correctly, only one city gave me all the data. Most of them were like, no, we don't have it or we're not giving it to you. And I was like, well, I don't want to FOIA you. I can FOIA you. Freedom of Information Act allows me to get all that data. I just thought it was silly that I couldn't get that data. To, to, to get something so simple to know, oh, by the way, 50% of the business is closed this year. That would be some some good information to want to know wh- why that happened, but you guys don't even have it. Like, that's a good understanding of your climate, of your business community by just having those simple answers. But exactly right. cities didn't have it. You know, in the state of the region, you know, you've got ODU, university efforts and and there but a lot of that stuff is all too positive it's not yeah. realistic it's like oh yeah celebrate this and i'm all about celebration but let's be realistic too and not the one states. they did this year <laughs> oh really well that's good but but a lot of the state of the cities stuff it's all celebration stuff and, and i get why they do it and i'm all yeah. about celebration sure but yep. at the same time let's have a real look at stuff and be like okay like we lost 17 percent. 17 is probably how we lost four percent of our businesses this year yeah. why right can, can we come to an uh, can we come to an understanding so that we can fix that in the future? Is there a bigger trend in one of these things uh, as to the type of company that is coming in here? Why can we work on making that a bigger thing? But if we don't even have the data collection on that from the people that should be collecting it, it's I don't know. It's just silly to me. No, it's, it, and I couldn't agree more. And it, it's spot on. Everything you described is is traditionally what 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 happens. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're providing a solution to the best that we can. If we're capturing the data, we will be, you know, we got to look at the, at the guardrails and all that, but, but uh, we want to be able to provide that data as a resource to the region so that we can understand, better understand what's going on and potentially talk about solutions that are applied to that. Dan, I'm curious how much you, you just, you think about things in a different light. Um, and I appreciate the vision that you have and the directions that you want to take everything. How much do you credit that, that you didn't necessarily, you didn't grow up here. You, you came from Chicago, you had experience with Canon, you had experience with Apple. So you've seen a lot of different things in a lot of different ways and a lot of different senses of hustle. How much do you attribute that to the way that you think and operate 
um, or uh, and then comparatively speaking to going back to my initial thing where this is the biggest small town that you're ever going to be part of, you know, where it's just a lot of the same, we have 400 years of history that just continue to get in our way. Do you, do you think that you think differently based on your broad background or? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, I think that in, in part is largely true. Uh, you know, my experiences has, has uh, um, brought me through cultures of, of, you know, high tech, amazing growth and, you know, what's the next great thing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was an entrepreneur. I ran my own consulting company for, you know, for several years and, uh, and very successfully handful of employees, not huge, but so, so I, I, I took that and I blended it in with my corporate experience. And we used the term entrepreneur, um, in, in terms of entrepreneur while in corporate America, there was always opportunities to do something very, very cool, very, very innovative. And that's the experience of, of, you know, not sitting on your hands, trying to get it done. Complacency was never a component of, of what we needed to do in some of these high tech, high growth firms to, uh, to succeed. We were always looking for the next greatest thing. And so I think that, that that's just the, the nature of, of how I was brought up in, in, uh, in business. And, uh, and I think that there's a lot of people that, that have that same type of, of, uh, of makeup in the region or, you know, and, and those are the people that we have to yeah. work with. I always kid. I'm like, gosh, from an entrepreneurship standpoint, we had a four, you know, talk about a first mover advantage. I mean, like entrepreneurship was born here. I mean, like Jamestown is where it all started. Oh, you know, and, and we have the ultimate first mover advantage and we blew it and we can't get it back. So that's what our mission is, is to try to, to gain some of that momentum back and, and, I'm going to, I'll stop off, step off my soapbox from now, but uh... you're hundred percent correct. And so, you know, we, we got to keep beating the drum. We just got to keep beating the drum and building that excitement. There's smart people. There's brilliant people out in the business world here. And so we just got to keep beating the drum and say, look at the ecosystem, the healthy ecosystem that we have in this region. That's what we're trying to contribute toward. Is there anything we haven't talked about today that you want to talk about? How's your dog? Well, <laughs> that dog uh, passed away during I'm sorry. Uh, in, in 2020. Uh, that was that was a rough time. But however, we have two new dogs, and they're good. And uh, th decided to get another beagle. I don't know. That was uh, well. Tim's met that dog, and that dog was <laughs> a little crazy that day. And That's my wife's dog type beagle. She always wants me to get a beagle. So. Yeah, then we got a black lab, and the black lab is is also crazy, but in a, a well, she's a year younger, but yes, uh, Ashbrook lived fifteen years. That was that was a good life for him, and uh, yeah, thanks for asking about that. Yeah, it was well, uh, an animal lover, and so I remember that. Yeah. So, uh, but I think we've talked about some good things, and uh, you know, I, I appreciate what you guys are doing for the region. I appreciate uh, Tim every bit of support that you're providing for. Uh, with start wheel and, and then towards HR biz wheel. Um, you know, we didn't talk about that. The naming convention. I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm not a marketing guy. I didn't know, you know, 757 biz wheel. I didn't, you know, I don't know. That was a new character. We didn't do it. We didn't ask permission. You know, we can always rebrand it if, if there was enough uh, pressure, yeah. but HR biz wheel seemed like something to, to do. Get out there and break something, and if it doesn't work, then you can fix it. But 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 you gotta at least try to execute on something and figure out if it's gonna succeed or fail. Beg for forgiveness. In fact, I'll I'll wrap up with the final story that uh, HR Biswell Quarterly was not uh, named HR Biswell Quarterly. It was uh, Tim, Tim. Help me here. It was HR Biz Connects. HR Biz. Oh Connects. right, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so and and so we branded it that. I could have sworn I did some Google searching, but it didn't come come upon there was a uh, another organization that was using that term. We even went as far as to, to get uh, 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 coffee uh, coasters that uh, uh, that Bo etched to the you know, inaugural HR Biz Connects um, quarterly type of thing. And so all of a sudden I got, I got a, a call from a very nice lady uh, who says, so did you know that I run these 
these uh, these networking events. And I said, oh, no, nice to meet you. I didn't know. I, and she goes, you know what they're named? And I, I said, no. And she says, HR Biz Connects. And I'm like, you don't say. <laughs> hmm. and, uh, and so she says, uh, you know, she was citing everybody. Well, didn't, you know, didn't the chamber guy, you know, didn't Bob say anything? Did Tim say anything? Did this person? I said, I said no, I didn't, you know, I didn't ask him. <laughs> so I, I don't know. And uh, you handled that very graciously. You, you, you gave her a, a, a speaking uh, time to talk about her organization at the event and uh, everybody yeah. laughed and oh, yeah, he made some jokes. Yeah, oh, that's right. I immediately fell on my sword, said, do not worry. We're not going to steal your name. That was not our intent. And we will rename it and, and come as a guest and, and you get a, you know, a little bit of mic time to, to joke about it. And that's what she the did. The crazy thing is she was a previous guest on the show early, early on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't know. This is one of those things that didn't, didn't, no pun intended. It did not connect. Uh, when... yeah, well, that's a horrible pun, Tim. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. <laughs> yeah, I think when you use jargon that's so readily normal, yeah, I think that's where it comes, where it yeah. becomes a challenge. And so because there's nothing special about that, you're like, yeah, it, 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 you're, you're kind of like, you're, the name is the description, yeah. right? Yeah. And that and, and that becomes a challenge when something isn't so unique. Um, but yeah. yeah, so we made nice and changed the name. And so here we are. And, and well, and, and now Laura Henderson of Disconnect is going to get a, a, a tag in the show notes and the description and, 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 uh, and uh, everything will be good. There it is, because I can see yeah. Andrew writing it down right now and <laughs> she's getting more free publicity. So congratulations, <laughs> Laura, on that. But she was very, very kind, very sweet. Yeah. about the whole thing. Tim, do you think we left anything out? No, I, I, I hope to see everybody uh, December 1st at the Hive. And if you don't, uh, this being evergreen content, uh, if, you, if you listen after December 1st, 2022, then we'll see you in quarter one on a ship Yes, at Huntington Ingalls. Uh, Tim is so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantee yet. Uh, and just and watch for the the regional marketing uh, activity. Yeah, and, nope. and if you want to uh, if you want to get your, ensure your business is listed on the business directory, you go to uh, hrbizwheel.com and then uh, make sure that your your business is listed. But that will be in the show notes as well. Absolutely, great great collaborative effort. Thank you guys for doing the show and thank you for having me on as a guest today. Absolutely, Thanks, thank Dan. you. Yeah. If you enjoyed what you listened to, download and subscribe now. Peace.